comfortable for me to think this, but is it possible that uh, coaches decide to leave some players on the bench because it's an away game, which to them they will lose anyway, and so they want to preserve their best players for the more likely, uh, the games they're more likely to win, which would be those games they play at home. Well, if that's the thinking, I think it's inept, I think it's uh, redundant, I think it's retrogressive, I think it uh, really negates everything that good football should be about. Well, oh, certainly. Uh, this is a man who's had, uh, uh, well, I, I believe you, Bowie, but we've had strange things, like being told last uh, season, if you remember, by a former coach at Heartland, that some players are not started in the away games because they don't expect them to score. They only score at home. Uh, but uh, <laughs> as, as Hilarious said, that sounds up, the teams do it and say things like that. But Tijani Adamu is uh, going off and his place will be taken by former Wiki Tourist of Bauti player Victor Alebe. Like for like. Well, that was a very soft free kick to award. That has been awarded and the crown would feel hard done by. It is uh, the newcomer, Waif Bello, maybe throwing his weight around uh, by the referee's reckoning too heavily. He got penalized there. Dolphins taking it easy between Victor Ezurike and uh, Emmanuel Olowo. You see how Lawale beats his man. He's content with spraying the passes there. He's not made any foray forward in this game since coming on as a substitute. And it's a good touch there. Well, that was well earned by Victor Alegbe. He came on and I'm sure he's supposed to, he's expected to do some uh, magic. <laughs> he almost did there. <laughs> that was actually magic. I don't know what happened here. Oh, okay, I did, uh, I, I, I can see that. I thought he was trying to make a meal of it. But that hand actually made contact with his face. At times these things happen so quickly. I think the only way to dispossess Oluo is just to put him down and just give away the free kick. Well, bringing him down himself is quite some task because uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's so passively built. Uh, look at that. He <laughs> took a little extra effort from his own path to go down there uh, if uh, what I saw was right. It wasn't really the opponent that succeeded in bringing him down. Emmanuel Oluo himself uh, uh, played quite a role, a part in that. But that's the strength and the build of the man. <laughs> well, that's a new one. <laughs> uh, on the strength of what I've seen today, I don't think this is the season that uh, Crown of Ogbomosho will preserve their top flight status. I think they've just run out of transfer windows. We didn't wait to bring in players. And I don't even know if there had been extra transfer windows, whether they could have managed to bring in better players because the ones they have at the moment are complaining of not being paid, not just for weeks, but for months. The pass just catching Ebube Okoku from behind. It was meant for him, and if it had gotten to him, well, your guess is as good as mine what would have happened there. But Crown counter-attacking. We're inside the last seven minutes of this game. It is still two goals to nail in favor of Dolphins of Port Harcourt. The Liberation Stadium bubbling here. The first game in a double header. We'll still have another full game here between a Port Harcourt based side chart and the side from Oweri, Emo State, Heartland. You know, when you look at uh, Dolphins, they, that back four, Ame Fule, Jonathan Zike, uh, Oloa and Ezurike is, uh, like you rightly noted, is beginning to look like uh, the Enyimba defense of last season of uh, Ubu Wadiogu, Esieme, Ojobu, and of course, uh, Chinedu Doji. I mean, they're looking unbeatable um, here. And that will float in nicely. Oh, well, that's his side coming to good use there. 
Thunder Rotimi was just magnificent the way he one handed saved that one and clutched it at the second attempt. Good goalkeeping. <laughs> Fantastic goalkeeping. Rare, bright moment up front for Crown. A player lying flat on his back. That's quite some sprint from Shehu Musa. As fast as the referee can get. Has to be careful, depending on the type of injury it is. That's a Mecca Toloma who gets a, a gloved pat on the back from Sunday Rotimi, who, of course, um, is in imperious form at the moment, and that recent save buttresses that fact. Let's see what happens to Atonoma. Well, we can't see that at the moment, but we can certainly see this team. Very, very intelligent. In, uh, I mean, he needed to have that touch. He got the touch and, of course, went down beautifully, covering his uh, body with his body. He's done this for years. <laughs> Almost second nature now. Uh, some of the big boys in the league, the man uh, with the phone, Chairman of Sharks, okay, Baluku, his team takes to the pitch right after this to face Hatland in what should be a humbling out subs. But this is where we are at the moment. 2-0, Dolphins lead crown, goals after 24 minutes from M.M. Edward and one in the second half from the now substituted Ifan Yogwim. And here they go again. Well, the flag was up on uh, Okoku. Everybody will cut outside one more time. Good touch from Francis Nedum for Crown. It's going to be a free kick to Crown. Take it easy. Referee Shehu Musa seems to be saying to the culprit, very quickly taken, almost too quickly for Crown. And the ball across there touched just into the hands of uh, goalkeeper Sunday Rotimi. away from the end here and the Bubokoku will get a rest he will be substituted and the man to take his place will be Omar Johnson there is more left uh, less a cameo and uh, while all this is going down here up north in Kano it's also same time uh, but Elkanimu Warriors have missed a late penalty Obioma Arize smashing the ball against the crossbar and that was right after uh, his teammate Nafshu Bala was brought down by uh, Joe Mamo. So it's still nil-nil in Kano between El Kanemi Warriors and FC Taraba. With just about three minutes left. Offside again against MM Edwalk. Final two minutes of this game. Dolphins would seem to have won this one. It's 2 nil. And offside counts, well, Dolphins have wrapped up their own offside counts as well. It's six apiece now. And uh, this will seem three points in the bag for the Port Harcourt side. Crown simply no match for Dolphins on the day. Michael Uweru had to come out. And uh, you could see the attackers of uh, Crown don't even try to contest the ball with the defense of uh, Dolphins. They're simply going through the motions. That is, Dolphins, they're not done yet. Uh, the ball had crossed the line. It's going to be a goal kick. One step too many, perhaps. And uh, you would think that that ball should have been crossed early enough. 
It took too many touches, I do think. He should have crossed the ball there, and uh, when, when that second step he took meant the ball crossed the line uh, before he could uh, dig it out. That's uh, Atoloma. Still nil nil in Kano, but we've seen two goals here, and we'll have just two minutes after the end of the 90. I think this game was won once that second goal went, went in because uh, they hadn't seen uh, much from Crown before that second goal by Ifanyo Guim, and uh, since that second goal went in, in fact, they've actually been worse off. Indeed, that second goal completely took the fight out of uh, the visitors here. And uh, that is the point at which I think they considered defeat. Isiako Lawale has been played 90 minutes these days. He's come on in age, and uh, he would seem to put in less number of minutes in games now. But his experience is still invaluable. It's not something you can buy in the market. It's something that comes with years of uh, hands-on involvement. We're going to add a time now. And uh, Dolphins would get a free kick. Free kick. Edging the ball forward and from a long, long way out. That effort that wasn't going on target. It's the second time we've seen that from Zikir. He tried one in the first half and uh, he just tried another one. But I think that's also a good way to waste a good attacking opportunity because that was a bit too optimistic. But I can't crown be playing this way. So careless out at the back. It's Chidio Koli again. Yeah, they were slipping through those passes and that one coming through. Well, I think that somehow M.M. Edward turned his back on that ball somehow. Uh, perhaps he shouldn't have done that. But it's still Dolphin. They want to finish on a high here. But uh, gently they begin to go back. Safety first, I'm sure. They've told themselves. And uh, they would rather err on the side of caution. Just about seconds of the added time left here. Uh, it would seem to have gone the way of Dolphins today. Crown, well, they've been better in almost all departments of the game today by a hungrier, stronger, vastly more experienced and surely more efficient Dolphins today. Crown have been undone and uh, they, they are really in no position to complain about uh, either of the goals. They were clinically dispatched goals and uh, the officiating today has also been top-notch and uh, it's kudos to the trial of Chehu Musa. Philip Hembe and Abbas Mohammed, his two assistants. We've seen out the two minutes. And uh, perhaps a final opportunity for Crown to do something. They can't do anything about that. You'll expect the referee's way. So, well, there it goes. It is the end of the game here at the Liberation Stadium. And uh, the Dolphins have really done it in style here. They could have scored more. That man got off the first goal. He got the goal going in the 24th minute. Clinical finish of a pass from Chidi Okolie. And of course, uh, Ifani Aguim with that equally amazing chip over the head of the goalkeeper, giving, a, giving them a 2 nil uh, scoreline. And uh, well, I think that Crown must feel slightly flattered by this scoreline. They were that much second best. And uh, Sunder Rotimi, he led by example. Skipper of the side, he was really marvelous. Crown, they have been bested today. Nothing they could do about it. And you can see how dejected they look. They really didn't come to the party here. And uh, you don't think that uh, they could have done much better than they did on the strength of their squad and the strength of the squad they came here to confront. It has been a great day for Crown, uh, for Dolphins. It has been a rather uh, dismal day for Crown of Obama Show. They're going back home empty handed. The second uh, game in a row that they've lost. They played away uh, against uh, a, a, in the, at the weekend. And in fact, Kalechi is just uh, giving me a hand signal here. That is the fourth game where they've not picked up even a single point. But it's ended here at the Liberation Stadium in the first of our doubleheader. Dolphins 2, Crown Football Club nil. 
Well, a tough day at the office for Crown FC, and like Colin Nudo predicted earlier on, the game ended by two goals to nil. The usual suspects with the goal, talking about MMA Dog, who scored his ninth goal of the season, and for Ifaya Gwim, his eighth goal of the season as well. We saw that injury to uh, Ifaya Gwim, but uh, from what we've heard, it's not too bad. Just had a cut on the nose, which was stitched up by the doctor, so he is looking very, very good indeed. But for Dolphins FC, it means they are now level on points with Cano Pillars and of course looking very good for that uh, potential or possibility of a title at the end uh, of this season. But still a very long way to go, like we mentioned earlier on, but uh, good results for them. So I'm going to cut, uh, talk to Coach Eguma now. Remember, uh, he wasn't too happy with the way the last match ended uh, against Giwa FC, but you, I'm sure you are very satisfied with the way uh, the result turned out today. Yeah, I'm very happy for today, you know. The game was okay. The opponents, they played very well.